If this is your experience with your child, you should pick up I Don't Want to Read This Book, written by Max Greenfield and illustrated by Mike Lowry. Available now for pre-order at barnesandnoble.com, <laughs> penguin.com, amazon.com, anywhere you can buy a book. And then, uh, and then we'll cut to after when we read the book. Oh, whoa, we finally did it. We read a book. <laughs> good, jo- good job, buddy. Thanks, man. <laughs> Coffee's very good, Rick. If you just trust me, this energy is different two minutes after we start. I, I, am, I appreciate this energy. I'd like for you to take it into the, I don't want you to adjust for me. I want you to be as authentically you as possible. All right, well, then I might have to take this sign down because it's a bit of a reflection that's bothering me. You do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. The eye line has since changed. And since we're just a couple of Bombas guys being honest. Whatever you want to do, it's your show, man. I mean, you know there's a wall. There's a wall here. That's all I needed. Okay. Go back. Go wherever you No, need. it's fine. I feel, I feel really good. I just can't cross my legs, but maybe I don't want to do that anyway. All right, let me see how this would go. All right. Yeah, no, I mean, Schmidt was a big character on the show. Pretty good. What was it like? Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. (laughs) You're doing great. What episode is this for you? One. Hold on, hold for sound. I can hear you enough. Okay. 109 or 110. You've done a hundred of these? And, uh... Things keep changing. Things keep changing. I move. But that's good. That's great. Um, but I haven't. F- but basically, what that means is I haven't figured anything out. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, do we? I mean, I, what? What's? If we figure it out, what's the point? If we figure it out, what's the point? Hi, I'm Rick Glassman with a special guest, Max Greenfield. Feld. Field. Field. And welcome to another episode of Take Your Shoes Off. Scoot doo. Blabbity blue, scoop D. Oh yeah! Theme song, good. We'll jump cut the beginning. I don't care. <laughs> All right, let's check some levels here. Yeah, outside's a little louder than usual, but it's good. All right, this will have to do, right? Yeah, that's part of it. I'll play it. I'll play it. I'll work it into the scene. Um. It's funny that you say that because a friend of mine, uh, mm-hmm. John DeWalt, we'll put his Instagram handle up here, he and I, big fans, and he is a writer and wrote a little, if we end up getting to it, but I'm going to plant a seed. He wrote okay. a little scene for us because he wants you to. You and I? For us. Oh my God, that's exciting. Like a little, oh, do, you know, we must, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're probably, are we playing Garbage Men? <laughs> playing Transformers. Oh. I mean. Well, okay, that works. You know, well, you. This is part. Let's let's, let's do it now. Yeah. Um, and uh, maybe it could take place in front of a garbage, whatever. Or this is our transformer noises when we're you yeah. know changing it. I don't watch those movies, but I would assume when they change from a car into a robot, they make a bunch of noise. Yeah. You don't. You've never seen any of the transformers. No. Is it like? Did you audition for one and not get it? And you're like, fuck them. No. <laughs> that's not. That's not my thing, man. I haven't seen the Transformers. I haven't seen Lord of the Rings. Okay. Well, um, I guess there goes question one, two, and three. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to ask what it's like working with Shia LaBeouf on the set of Transformers, but that wasn't you. All right. Let me give you this script. This episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a company that sends you food. You make it, and it's delicious. Don't believe me? Are you calling me a liar? Because I did it, and I loved it. And then I did it again. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Tyso12 and use promo code Tyso12 for up to 12 free meals and free shipping. I'm reading this cold, so if I mispronounce any words, it's because I'm not the best reader. Um, oh, yeah, good. You saying I'm reading this cold made me, it it reminded me, that's kind of like, you're telling me, but you're really telling the audience. I get it. Yeah, I mean, obviously. So there's something I forgot I wanted to tell the audience, but I'll tell you. I have this pimple here that I was like, what do I put a Band-Aid on it? You know, it is what it is. But uh-huh. I just feel like if you acknowledge it, people are like, well, he knows. Do you want me to work it into the scene? <laughs> I would rather you, I'd rather you did, yes. Um, I I'll just, find a place for it. Oh, this actually, 
I'm all right. I'm I'm in the pocket now. I think I feel good. I'm comfortable. It's you made me the feel worst, really safe. Always the worst. Place Shut to up. Be. I think I know what to do. <laughs> you fuck it. You know, just so mean. No, this is gonna be great. So um, I do have a sincere question for you, uh, and we could use this for it. Okay. Do you still audition, right? Or you? Oh yeah. 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 There's a line um, between once you have a job, it's easier. But when you're going into audition, especially when you're in with the writer, is there a thing that you feel out to how comfortable can you be to go off book does that question make sense yeah 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 I, um and also i'm sorry yeah, could yeah, you please. move this okay so it's like under you okay. and then up so it's not blocking your face <laughs> okay i'm gonna give you a change of clothes <laughs> i mean fuck me you're making me feel so safe and I, I wonder if i take advantage of that i think you already have but keep going oh no 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 <laughs> i don't i don't i meant subconsciously uh yeah so how what is what is the vibe i mean Obviously, you know people at this point, and they know you, but... I mean, you'd be surprised. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well... I don't know that many people. Well, watch uh, a Transformers film. I, well, let me tell you. If I went into audition for Transformers, no improv. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or or you go full improv, and you're like, fuck these guys. Uh-huh. I don't care anyway. Um, so... Um, and then you go like this. Was it, was it not better? <laughs> <laughs> Did I, didn't I make it better to the writer? <laughs> That's right. But answer that sincerely if you can, like advising me, because I always feel more present when I'm able to do my own thing. Yeah. But that's not always what the job is. Well, I think there's levels to doing your own th- thing. I think, it, I think one, you have to understand and be, and be realistic with what you're auditioning for. So I think if you're going in for a multi-camera uh, sitcom on CBS, you do not improv at all because that doesn't work on that format. You're, you're, is CBS in particular, or you're just saying that? Well, they, cause, of, well they, they do the most multicams. Right. But a multicam in general, it's because it's set up punchline tight choreography. Yeah, it's exactly. It's very choreographed. So it, like, there really isn't room for it. And if you do it, it's like, well, Rick is really funny, but I don't know that he can do multicam. Right. So you just improv your way out of a job um then i think you know now single cams all sort of like everybody to come in and play with it a little bit but not in not so much that you go aren't i funnier than you is that an ego thing i just i think you wanna you know if if you f- i think i think the actually the rule of thumb on it should be at least in my experience if it feels natural to what you're doing in the moment Great, do it. If not, you don't need to like rewrite somebody's stuff. All right, I'm gonna let you for a multi. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> good, please. That was an excuse. I really didn't even need this light. Okay, that's perfect. I'm nearly blind, but it's fine. No, you're not. No, I'm okay. I'm good. Okay. I might have to break just to close my eyes for like five minutes somewhere in the middle, but it'll be you know, cool. Someone who jokes all the time, I never know when people are joking. You're fine. I'm totally fine, but, but I might not be. So we'll keep going. Also, I might start sweating, which could be, which would be because of the lights, not because it's hot out. Put that on high. The fan. I honestly didn't know if that was a fan. I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was like, oh, it's like a humidifier or something. Yeah, it's a fan. You could bring it closer to you if you don't feel it. It's I can't. I honestly can't reach it. I'm so tucked against the wall right now. <laughs> That Every, everything you're saying is funny and works, but is making me anxious. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I just I can't really move that much. So you want to switch? Do you want to switch spots? No, I do. I don't. Thank I God. like it out here. This is where the guest is. I'm not going to sit in the host seat. I'm, I'm so a, glad. I'm, this is your show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's a multicam. Okay. Is it a multi? Uh, is it double spaced? Uh, it's not. It's who cares? Whatever. We'll right. play with it. Um. So as much as this is, a are you going to read stage direction? Oh, you should have brought someone in. Okay. I'll read stage direction. Okay. Is and that going to be confusing though? I'll read stage direction like in a, in a more like in a different lower mm-hmm. voice. Great. Uh, and as much as this is a joke, uh, I do th- believe that John w- was into doing this. Wants me to fund it? Because he wants you to hire him <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or, you know, work with him or give him a high five if you see him. You've met John before. Um, John and his wife, Allison, are writing partners, mm-hmm. and they came to Futile and Stupid Gesture. Okay. And we were outside. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys were, like, walking around. And yeah. It was at a, on a break. And they, you really, I don't think this is private. I can't imagine There's it's no, private. There's nothing's private. It's a good rule of thumb. 
Uh, they can't conceive. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. They have a baby. <laughs> Shout out to Iris. We'll put her Instagram handle up here. Um, you struck a chord with John that he has since referenced probably five times, which is um, I don't necessarily agree with his assessment of actors. I understand. But he thinks that eh, this is an actors, I guess. But just his experience with a lot of people is people aren't too interested in him. Okay. Whether they are or they're not, they pretended they are or they were, but they didn't show it. That's just his idea. You asked him a couple of questions about like... It's a low bar. <laughs> I, I do remember though. I do remember feeling like, oh, you were very engaged and, and kind to everyone, uh, as you have been when I'm setting this up. But still, all it was to him is, yeah, he asked me questions like about what I was working on and like people don't ask you that. And he just thinks you're the nicest guy in the world because of that. So... Well, I like this growth... Much more <laughs> well, he's, already. <laughs> um, also, we're just, and I said this three times now, and I'll try to relax, but we are legitimate big fans of yours. Uh, so I think this is a joke, but he wants you to really, I think, I think this is a joke, but he wants you to really like him. So, you know, improvise, but also show him some respect. I, I, I mean, I, I, my instinct was to stick, because I, I want people who are listening, the audience who we referenced before, I want them to really understand what we're reading here right. and not have them get confused on like what we're riffing on. So I want them to experience the script that we're about to do. Great. There's a Instagram handle I follow. I forgot what it's called, but they show like the scene and then the lower third is the script scrolling up. Oh, that's cool. You know, so I don't know if I'll do that, but that feels hard technically. But whatever. do you want to give it a quick pass so you could feel like you do your best or do you want to cold read cold read it? Is there any big words? Uh, honey, <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, I don't okay. think so. Um, it looks like you have most of the monologue, so I'm, I'm, fe I feel really? good. No, yeah. no, no. That's funny. Yeah, I'm, oh God, Lamorne's in it. That was, a, that was a spoiler. It's okay. Sorry. It's okay. It reminded you can, you me. Can cut actually. that out. You can cut that out. Uh, it reminds me because I have. Um, okay, we have to call him for it. I. He, it would be nice if he play, if he showed up. Uh, my he, he's you know he's very busy, he's famous. Is he is he famous? Is he the most famous of them? I think so. Uh, okay. We'll edit out all the dead space, or we'll leave it in to show that we're not perfect. My writing sample for Max Greenfield, so he wants to work with me by John DeWalt. Okay. <laughs> um, so we're gonna treat this like a multi, okay? Great. So, how would you describe multi? I would describe multi as, as, as a little more broad, yeah? Do we want to read the bottom of the title page uh, or a cover, actually? Yeah, you read it. It says ICM Partners. That's an agency for uh, anyone listening. And then in parentheses, it says, yeah, that's right, the big boys. Give them a call when you're ready to hire me. Just call the front desk and say, I got to work <laughs> with DeWalt. Set it up, then hang up immediately. Okay. If you ever do that, record it, would you? I, I absolutely will. Okay. I'm not with ICM, so I'm happy to do it. Who are you with? Well, come on. Nothing, that, nothing's we, talked about, we talked about privacy, and that okay. feels like a private okay. thing. Okay. I'm with UTA. Thanks. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Thanks. Sir. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. Oh, I didn't tell you... Uh, Every 10 minutes, I can possibly five to 10 minutes look I behind me. Whatever you want to do. Wow. You'd be a, you're a good dad. I could tell you're a good dad. Well. And we're back. <laughs> it's interesting you point that out. Uh, we'll get to it. <laughs> uh, interior, the bar where the characters always go because it's a sitcom. Rick sits on the couch, nervously playing with his Rubik's Cube because he's a neurotic and intelligent alpha genius. Done. One minute and seven seconds. Chicks love a dude who finishes fast. <laughs> oh, we don't need to read the stage directions, do we? <laughs> I mean, it's just going to okay, mess fine, up the flow. Fine. Okay. So I mean, we'll put in the studio then, audience. Just laugh. then, Max an enters, livid. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Max sits next to Rick. I guess we're reading him. Uh, Max is a super cool dude who is handsome and non-threatening in a non-threatening way and who has okay. charisma just oozing out of his eyes. All right. Also, he's the kind of comedic timing that you can that cannot be taught. You just have to have it. Wow. Hey, Brosif. What's wrong, my guy? Ah, damn it. Damn it, I say. She's gone. 
Brenda left me. I lost her. I freaking lost her. Whoa, what the WTF, bro? Brenda was your... No, what, she what? was my dream girl. Don't you think I know that, Rick? What, you, you, you think you think Brenda's just fall out of the sky or grow out of trees? You, you think Brenda's grow out of trees, you son of a bitch? No. Yeah, no, no is right. I know she's my dream girl. It's freaking Brenda. Well, what happened, bro? Well, what? Well, what happened, bro? Okay, yeah, go back. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You lead me in with just Brenda. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Hold on, sorry. Or just do the whole line. No, before. I know, I know she's my dream girl. It's friggin' Brenda. Well, what happened, bro? Stuffer Walken. What happened? I'll tell you what happened. I took your advice. That's what happened. Thanks a lot, Richard. You idiot. My what? What advice? You don't mean. Oh, what I said about nipple play. Yeah, nipple play. Yes. I did exactly what you oh. told me to do. You, you know. <sighs> Boudoir. Okay, good. I was having trouble. I'll do it. I'll take you yeah. from nipple yeah, play. Yeah, nipple play. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I did I did exactly what you told me to do. You know, in the in the boudoir. Okay. One more time. Okay. Yeah, nipple play. Yes. I did exactly what you told me to do. You know, in the... Uh, Right in the in the boudoir, and she left. That's so bogus. Chicks love getting their nipples respectfully played mm -hmm. with, alternating from clockwise to counterclockwise, where you gaze into their eyes and say, "Wow, oh, wow, what? what a woman!" Yeah, I know. That's what I did, just like you told me to. And she ghosted you. Ghosted me. But I thought her name was Brenda, not Casper. <laughs> <laughs> um, the fuck did you just say? Sorry, I, that was an improv. Yeah. Well, Keep going. Okay. This is... Oh, you know what? Because you're supposed to pause for laughter. It's, it's an interesting technique. I want to make sure I give it the right amount of time. So I'm that, gonna, the, that My little improv would have been edited out yes. for sure. Because it would have been buried... Camera wouldn't have been, been buried. It, camera would have been on me. and would have been better, buried under laughter. But it was fun for the moment for yeah, us. Yeah, Keep yeah. going. Um, it's like something funny to connect with during rehearsals. Keep going. Um, but I'm going to do it before so I could pause for the laughter. Because we'll put the laughter in. Okay. Well, uh, maybe I'll, I'll lead you in. Wow, what a woman, I know. Yeah, that's what I did, just like you told me. And she ghosted you? But I thought her name was Brenda, not Casper. <laughs> now notice, this, they would cut to me there, because the, actually what's, 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 not, what's also funny, aside from the joke, is the reaction. Uh -huh. This is a serious moment for me, and you're making jokes. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. I'll make sure also, by the way, I do edit it that way where we cut it Thank to you. Thank you. That's yeah, yeah. kind of why I was telling you. Yeah. This is totally not Diesel. This sounds like maybe like one of my catchphrases is that's Diesel. This is totally not Diesel. No cap, as the kids say. My point is, babes love a good nipple rub, and it's why they get erect nipples, same as we get with our peens. It's science, dude. It's how nerves work, man. Fuck. I am mad. Well, well, what are we going to do? Uh, but we, Richard, the only thing we will be doing for the foreseeable future is fist fighting. Because you made me lose Brenda. Damn you. Rick, nice. Rick stands up mad. I'm staying here for now. But hey, you know what? Bag that. Bag it. Because I'm going to get Brenda back for you. You are a total catch. You're yeah, yeah, I know. mega I, handsome. Yes, I know. I know what you mean. I guess... Well, I guess that's true in a modern, you know, cool kind of way. Yeah, you're in amazing shape. Uh, gl well, gluten-free. And you are great, very great in New Girl. Uh, you know what? Thank you, Richard. That's very kind. It's mostly thanks to the writers, but... You so know. if you're this great guy, and I'm a Jewish heartthrob that collects Magic the Gathering cards in my deep 30s, then it's safe to say if we put our heads together, listen to me, you and I, we could get Brenda back. I'm listening. Hard cut to interior, the bar, that very scene, that, that every scene in the show takes place in again. Start over. Yep. <laughs> interior, the bar that every scene of the show is in again. Right? Great. Rick and Max enter, now wearing fake mustaches, big suits, wigs, costumes, maybe blurred nudity. Um, we'll do some animation on this. What would you like, a, a, a mustache? Sure. All right, I'll take a mustache. 
Um, I'm going to leave that up to hair and makeup and, and I guess, uh, animation. Yeah. Yeah. It's just to show that like we, like we tried some big elaborate plan. Right. Ugh. Well, that didn't work. No, it did not. <laughs> Excuse me. Studio laughs, claps. Uh, oh, my, my phone's ringing. Hold on. Sorry. Oh, it's Lamorne. Ugh, really? Thank God. You know, because if there's one guy who can help me feel better about losing my beloved Brenda, it's my old pal Lamorne. Will you please answer it? Hey, Lamorne, it's us. Oh, hey, guys. I was just calling to let you know I got a new girlfriend. Her name is Brenda. What the f- That backstabber! And guess what? She loves when I play with her nipples and say, what a woman. <laughs> yeah, it's like I always say, Brenda's been shopping. Thine Seinfeld theme music plays. I can't, don't have the rights for that because of YouTube. Uh, and Max and Rick freeze frame in a sitcom. Oh, shucks. Could you believe this guy? I roll pose. And scene. Okay. Not bad. DeWalt. DeWalt. Nice! Good. Max. Max? Yeah, that's it. Uh, Max, I have a thing uh, I do on my podcast that I've, um, I've learned that when you, to get people's attention, if you, say, if you say the name three times, you say it, then you question it, and then you exclaim it like that. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. It's just something that I do. Okay. Okay. Was that, did it feel like I wasn't paying attention? No, I think I was doing it because it's like a... Like a as an Easter egg to the show, and it just was a miss. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Um, so I wanted to do this at the end because there's, I wanted to get into some like interview style stuff. No, I like doing it at the beginning. Do you? Yeah. It gets the energy up. Mm -hmm. um, some people think you have a cheese plate at the end of dinner because sometimes the cheese is really strong. But why? That's you start. Oh, that's interesting. Start the cheese plate early. Yeah, I like that, and yeah. we could always. It's probably the best part. Yeah, I could and also. And then the dinner is the dinner. And if you like it, then everything was good. And if not, at least you started with something you yeah, enjoy. Yeah, totally. I get that. And then you don't want to get to the cheese plate, and it's like, this is not dessert, man. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I understand. You, um, you I, were someone I wanted to have on the podcast for a little bit. Oh. Uh, I actually reached out to Lamorne, I don't know, at some point a mm -hmm. year ago. Uh, and I asked if I sent him something to forward you, would he? And he said yes. And, you know, sometimes you just don't, you don't end up doing it. I just didn't do it. Oh. Um, why do you, did you... I know why. Why? Is it private? I'd rather not discuss. Okay. That's uh, it, because, because it's like, uh, it, I think the truth is I just, you know, I didn't because, <laughs> you know, I just, I mean, I did want you on. Obviously, it didn't come up enough to me. Right. But uh, what, the, what the hesitation was. Like, I want him to be on the show, but like. I mean, not really that much. No, the, where the hesitation is, because we don't know each other, mm -hmm. there is like... Um, well, we, we worked together before. Yeah, but we don't know each other. You know, like, I don't yeah, know do if you, you even you remember just, who I am. You just have like all... Of, you only have friends on the show? Like, no. What's the point of that? Usually it's people who, who at least uh, we a mutual follow on social. Oh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> If, if if you follow oh, me, you fo oh, you we follow each other. We follow each other. You've oh, seen it. my yeah, stuff. Sure, you know sure, who I am, sure. and yeah, yeah. and not so much in an insecurity way. I don't think maybe, but just in a reality way. I don't even know if you remember who I was. You know, we didn't do any scenes. We did one scene together three, four years ago, five years ago. I fully remember who you were. Awesome. I yeah. Don't know. People don't remember you. You know. <laughs> so when I would have written the email, it would have I would have had to like have thought about it, and like been like, how do I how do I be casual, but also, you know, and it's like, I don't know. It just made me uncomfortable. And oh my God. I had a whole conversation with Stekiel about you. Um, after we did that movie, Stekiel, Adam Stekiel, you tell sorry, you. sorry. Adam Stekiel who ran your show. Undateable. Undateable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I ran Adam's a buddy of mine and I ran into him and I was like, Oh, I just did a movie with Rick Glassman. And he was like, yes. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, I, I want Adam on, um, He's not in L.A. anymore, but no, he's he going to come on when he comes back. I think he's left, I don't think, I th I think he's left the show business. No. It's too easy for him. I know. That's true. I will put up a list of all the <laughs> rock <laughs> movies that he's written. Also put up a picture of him, too. Yeah. Just how handsome he is? Yeah. yeah. You're like, he's not the lead in the movie. He wrote uh -huh. him. 
Um, <laughs> Stupid. But then you you sent me a message after Mark Marin. Yeah, man. And that made me, dude. It made me feel so good. Oh, good. Uh, also, I was insecure about that appearance. You were the first thing I heard after it came out, like the first feedback I got from somebody. I thought you were so good on that show. Thank you. Um, those are, I just noticed we're wearing the same socks. Yeah, I yeah. like these socks. I'm, I've been trying to get Bombas to sponsor my podcast for two years now. I want to be just sponsored by Bombas, but they're, they're very good. I, fi- I've been having, I had been searching for socks for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, 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 I'm not sponsored by them. They're the be- by far. Me, nor am I. Consistently the best sock I've ever worn. Yeah, I really, because I, I, I work out quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can't tell, but. We'll animate some stuff. Thanks. But I would run, th- I would like rip through socks a lot and uh, not the Bombas. I like them. Anyway, th- that's neither here nor there. It's a little here. I got a little, I got excited. Let well, me maybe say, you get a sponsorship out of it. L- let me say I have had some holes in my Bombas before and it's don't, a bummer. Not your but check this out. R- don't I, edit I, this out. No, no, no. Edit. I send them a message on Instagram. Sure. I tell them. they Are they a mutual follow? They're not. No. But no. I haven't invited them on. Shit. I bought it. Uh, they asked me to send them a receipt, which, you know, you just have in your email. I had an eight pack. Three of the socks after a year had holes in them. They sent me a brand new eight pack. Free. Didn't ask any questions. Oh, that's nice. Lifetime warranty. They just send them to you. Yeah. Good socks. Good people. Thank you. <laughs> I listened to you on Marin. Um, and I, that's a, that, I've never done that show before. Um, but I would imagine that's a stressful and difficult show to do. Um, and, and for no other reason than... I'm just such a big fan of his and I like the show and yeah. you can tell sometimes when he's like, you know, so yeah, tell me a little bit more, but like you had a really, you guys had a great rapport and I thought you played, I thought you were honest and vulnerable on that show in a really great way, but also balanced it with comedy and like, it was just a great talk. Thank you. And like you played, you gave him all the status which was the right thing to do. Could you explain show. that differently or specifically what that means? Um, well, you, you let, you allowed him to be in charge of, of that whole podcast. And you would, you like understood how your comedy worked with right. his. And when he, I mean, he would like sort of go down, like down on you yeah. and you took it so well. And pl- and it played into what it was like. It, w- it was as if you were listening, like that you guys had a regular podcast for a while, and it was awesome. And I was like, and I just, and I was like, oh man, <laughs> if I was ever on that show, which I don't think I'd want to be because I'd be too nervous. Really, uh, even I would think because listen- you're such a fan. I listen to a lot of podcasts. Uh-huh. I like listening to them. I've got kids, and like when I walk the dog, I'm listening. And then when I'm driving them back, like when I drop them off at school, I drive back. It's like you know, it's relaxing. It's a nice mm-hmm. little like, oh, this is my like 20 minutes. I'll catch up on this. And uh, I can't think of anything or anybody who I'd rather listen to less on on this podcast than me. So is that I'm, how you feel about your work in general? Are you one are you somebody No, just on the podcast. Huh. I the work is somebody else's writing. I just don't want to listen to me talk. Right. Well then why why are you down to do this? Even even well cuz you asked me. Right. If they asked me to do it, I would do it. But like Gotcha. <laughs> There was a moment where I was like, I sent you, I sent you the message and then you responded and you were very gracious, but then you were like, you have to come and do my podcast. And I went, oh, here we fucking go. <laughs> Did you anticipate that? <laughs> no, I, I didn't really know that you had one. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's an embarrassing, vulnerable thing. Having a podcast being the booker of it and everything. It's I would really, imagine. It's really, I'm embarrassed all the time, man. Well, I, I, I had somebody ask me if I wanted to do one or host one. and I go, Have your own. Yeah. And I said, you've got to be kidding. I go, no, man. There's going to be long pauses where I'm like, mm, I'm trying to articulate myself. What's the exact word? And then like just five minutes go by of silence where I'm like, oh, wait, no, got it. When that happens, do you, what's, the, what's the negative feeling? Is it embarrassment or just this isn't an interesting product? When I'm looking for a word? <laughs> like if you, had, if, you had, if you did have a podcast. And yeah. then you're like, oh, fuck, I can't need to find something. What's the feeling? What's the oh, fuck? 
Because if it's not on camera, you don't care, right? I think if it's on camera, it's somebody else's words, so I don't, I don't really no, care. No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying like, and maybe I'm, I'm leaning into something that, that I don't need to be, but I am curious. What's the worry? I guess what I'm looking for is there's a worry. You're like, oh, I would be on camera for five minutes looking for a word. Like, why is that a problem? How is that different than real life? I just can't. I, 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 the idea of having to carry a conversation or to lead a conversation yeah, it's, yeah. for over an hour with somebody, I would, I'd, have to take, I'd have to sleep for a week. <laughs> uh, I can do it where it's like this, where it's a back uh, and forth. Sleep for, afterwards, you're saying how exhausting you would I'd be. be. And I'd be so nervous beforehand. Oh, my gosh. I'd lose my, I'd lose my fucking mind. There are episodes I have that it's, it's and, and I've done enough now to where logically I understand this is just a chemical reaction that happens to me. Yeah. And I could talk myself like I could parent my, like, Ricky, you're all right, man. Let's order some food, you know, but yeah. it lasts days. Some of them, they last days. I'm just, I'm, and then to watch and edit it. Oh, no, God. Oh, my God. It's tough, man. Like when you asked me, like, about your appearance on Marin just now when I was like, well, how do I articulate what was, what I, what I liked about it? It's, di it was, di I was difficult for me to find those words uh -huh. because like I listened to it and emotionally I connected to it and I had a great experience listening to it. And like, I'm not totally sure that I can fully articulate exactly what I loved about it. And then as I'm trying to do it after you asked me, I'm going, is this what I want to uh -huh. say? Yeah. I don't really know. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to find it in the moment. <laughs> no one will give a fuck, but me, I'm like, was that what I, I don't, I don't really know. I just like, I connected to it and it made me feel something or made me feel a few things. And I was like, great. I wanted, I meant to bring it up just to like, to connect on now you're over here. I didn't mean to have it be deconstructed. No. And now my version of that is feeling insecure that we're however many minutes in and we're talking about my appearance on Marin and it's not I, like, I want to get to you. But, uh, but I, this is where I want to live. Let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, well let, let's, uh, uh, let's split the difference. And you said to me, I let Marin lead. I, I let him be alpha and or at least high status. Yeah. You, and I'm not sure what made it in, but uh, you got here a little early. I was a little like setting up and figuring out. And you, I said to you, you I feel like you're such a great parent because you're like, whatever you need to do, man. It wasn't like talking to me like in support. It was talking to me directly, honestly, and giving me everything I needed, which just do whatever. I'm totally fine. Do your thing. And it made it easy for me. Um, was that you giving me control? Does that like what you're saying I was doing to Mark? Like it's your show, a buddy. Little, a little bit. Yeah. Like I'm in your, like I'm in your world right now. Clearly. It's so much easier for me when the other person. But like how I, to is me, their world. But to me, I feel like that's how you should approach all experiences. Where I'm walking into something, let me experience it and be a part of whatever it is. Right. As opposed to being scared of it and closing off and and like forcing my way into some sort of false comfort yeah it's a lot easier to be a guest because if i'm it, a great guest <laughs> you're doing great i'm a shit host yeah unfortunately i think the same but <laughs> i want to have a weekly thing i want to grow an audience for stand up and you know what i mean I, but it's such a fucking i don't know I, I mean i'm grateful for it and and i think i'm no but, but i think you, it's I so think, hard man i think i think you're very good at it okay i honestly i honestly do thank you yeah, and I could see, like, you You know what was interesting about the Marin thing, now that I'm, like, replaying it in my head? There was a real back and forth. You know, some people go on, not only his show, but a lot of these shows, and it's like, well, I'm here, what are you going to ask me? And, mm -hmm. like, I'm cool to talk about me the whole time. Mm -hmm. And you had, like, a nice back and forth, and it would be like, he would come at you with something, and it would bring up, and your answer might bring up something that you then took back to him. And it was a back and forth. And I think like that, those, those to me are like the most interesting conversations. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Are you anything like me where you enjoy cooking, but also you don't want to cook? You kind of just want the food. And what am I going to make? And how much do I need to get? And where do I get it? And I don't want to leave the house. Of course you are. That's why you're going to love HelloFresh. 
What is HelloFresh? Well, they deliver fresh, pre-portioned, high-quality ingredients to your doorstep, and every week, they have 25-plus different recipes. I just had the orange chicken and the loaded potatoes. It was a silly name for it. What was it called? Loaded... It was potato... It was uh, nachos, but it wasn't with chips. It was with potatoes instead. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. It's so good. It took me maybe a half hour to make. I decided to record this so you believed me of how delicious. Oh my gosh. It's so good. Those are the loaded potato wedges and I apologize for the chewing sounds. It grossed me out as I was listening to it, but it was in the moment and those were the sounds. Cook delicious meals while saving money and time. Try America's number one meal kit today. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Tyso12 and use code Tyso12 to receive up to 12 free meals and free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Tyso12. Use code Tyso12 for up to 12 free meals and free shipping. Max, give me a little snap. And we're back. Thanks, Bombas. And, uh, and, uh, you ever say and? You ever say and at the end of a sentence where you now, you were done, but you have to find something else? Yes. I also write that way too. And I'm real, and I realize, oh, I don't need the and. Just stop it here. Could you give an example? And, um, act it out? <laughs> I could try. Um, where I'll just put two adjectives at the end of something. Like I need to, like I really need to get my point across that, that the trip was not only amazing, and it was awesome. Yeah. It's like, no, just it, the trip was amazing. That's all it needs to be. What are you writing? Oh, good question. Uh, I've started writing. We'll be right back. <laughs> no, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've started writing children's books. Yeah? Yeah. Because you're reading children's books? Um. During the pandemic lockdown, uh, I had an a the same the same agent who called me and I said, "Hey man, do you th you should maybe host a podcast?" And I was like, "I can't, no, no, thank you." Um, but he also asked me about books, and I said, "Well, I you can't write a like a long you a know, long you, book. you couldn't say boudoir." <laughs> well, that, by the way, not even close. <laughs> um, yeah, you were like, <laughs> <laughs> I I like that you noticed it. Uh -huh. And came in really quick because I was sitting there for a while. I was like, and I saw it before I like got to it before. Yeah, I'm sensitive I to that I actually got too. to that word and I went, Scam no, I words. definitely <laughs> don't know that word. It's like, wow, blah, blah, blah. shit. Did your agent see you doing the videos with your daughter? Yeah. So he had seen the videos that I was doing with my daughter. He's like, I think there's a book in there. And I was like, it can't be like a parenting book. I'm not trying to write that. Right. Um, and then a real book is too long. Um, and then, uh -huh. do you read books? Not really. Um, I don't think I've ever finished other than, I think two goosebumps, but I don't think I've ever finished a book other than that. Yeah, I have, I, I, there's a few, but it's not my, it's not for me. I like to start them. I get really excited. Love to start a book. Love to buy a book. Can't wait to buy a book. Oh my God. Get me in a bookstore. I'm like, oh, this is like heaven. Right? You got a recommendation for me? I'll order it while we're here. Oh my God. Look at the beautiful <laughs> covers. Uh -huh. And then I'm like, oh, Just this have them up somewhere too. This is $34. That's it. <laughs> And then, and you're like, this is just sits uh -huh. on the fucking counter. Anyway, um, <laughs> so he goes, what about a picture book? And I go, oh, that'd be interesting. And, uh, and so I, I, I pitched him an idea um, like the next day, which was just so true to the experience that I've had in my house and I had when I was growing up. And we called the book, I Don't Want to Read This Book. Mm -hmm. And it's a book. It's basically just all the reasons why you don't want to read a book, but at the end of the book, you've read a book. Why are you comfortable telling me that now? That feels like something that people would be like, I can't talk about it. Is what? it out? Or is it done? No, it comes out in November. You oh, can, it's done. You can pre-order it now. Um, hey, honey, it's uh, time to go to bed. Do you want to you want to read a book before we go down? No, I don't like reading books. Well, okay, but what about this book? I don't know. It looks stupid. When is it? Oh, well, I, if you think it looks stupid, what about this one? You should say, I don't want to read this book because that's the title of the, of the, of the actual book. So, so what about this book? Snap, do it again. Okay. Start over? Yeah, and go right into it. No snapping, pausing. What are you doing? Okay. Hey, honey, it's time to go to bed. Should we read a book? I don't want to read a book. Um, my stomach hurts. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. Um, 
Hey, what about this book? This seems brand new. I don't want to read that book. Okay, well, what about this one? Say the same thing. I don't want to read that book. Okay, well, what about this one? I don't want to read that book. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> if this is your experience. Oh, oh, I get it now. I get it now. Yeah, I didn't know. I, I thought... I get it now. I thought you were pointing to your book. It says, I don't want to read that book. No, and you're like, no. exactly. You go down the shelf. It's like, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go you back. don't have let's kids. You don't have kids. Let, no, we'll do it again. We'll do it okay. again. We'll do it again. Right. We'll do it again. Do you have kids? Are there kids here? I shouldn't have just said that. No, you should have. Um, oh, you should. It's not that you should have. It's just, it's okay. Yeah, it's private. Don't. It's private. Um, I don't have kids. It's private. Uh, was I too slutty? Was I being slutty instead of childish? And I, I, it just wasn't believable. What do I do? It's fine. It's you were fine. Maybe I'll be a little boy instead of a little girl. Yeah, little, sure. I can connect fine. to that. Okay, ready? Hey, honey, it's time to go to bed. Should we read a book? Why are you grabbing your little nuts, boys? Grab man? their little boys. Do that. Yeah, but that's not. <laughs> Yo, I got it. I, uh, oh, hey, honey. Oh my God. I this relax. Works. We edited it together. It's great. Hey, honey, it's time to go to bed. Should we read a book? I don't know. I'm not tired. I don't like books. Okay, well, you know, uh, we're laying in bed. You probably should take your hat off. Okay. All right, well, uh, oh, I just got this book. What do you think? I don't want to read that book. Okay, well, what about the next one? I don't want to read that book. Oh, you know what? I hear this one's really good, too. I don't want to read that book. If this is your experience with your child, you should pick up I Don't Want to Read This Book, written by Max Greenfield and illustrated by Mike Lowry. Available now for pre-order at barnesandnoble.com, <laughs> penguin.com, amazon.com, anywhere you can buy a book. And then, uh, and then we'll cut to after when we read the book. Oh, whoa! We finally did it! We read a book! <laughs> good, jo good job, buddy. Thanks, man. <laughs> You can put your hat back on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Max. Mm. Max? Yeah. Max. No, that's how you pronounce it. Right. Um, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it was real. It's, it's, we, uh, yeah, it's been great. And is that what you meant where you were writing too many ands in a children's book? Pretty much. <laughs> that's the only thing I'm writing right now. Also emails. Did you write it with your kid? You have a, a daughter, and is that just one daughter? Yeah, I have an 11 year old daughter and a five year old son. Shout out to uh, put their L Lily and Ozzy. Lily and Ozzy. Yeah, they don't have Instagram handles. But we just say that. We just put it up. Okay. Um, and did they help you write it? A little bit, yeah. I was, you know, I would I would come to them and I would ask questions and they would give me like really funny, honest answers, and then you'd put that into sort of like <laughs> into 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 something that made grammatical sense. I have a question that's that's. Uh, that's really out of everything we've done really than like getting into like geez rick does, sure does doesn't fuck around okay he's just this is hard hitting type of shit all right should i be nervous no okay no it's nothing bad all right it's nothing bad it's just a direct question Go for about it. your career okay um So people who aren't in this business may not know this mm -hmm. even people in this business may not even people who are might not know this but it's my understanding from the conversations I've had that everybody, no matter where they are in their career, m m almost everybody, no matter where they're in their career, that's the status quo and they want the next thing or they want more or they want to at least be able to continue this thing. You have done so many things, including mm -hmm. the, the, I, I, what I think the Holy Grail is, is just being on a network comedy that's the best it was the best network comedy it's the best network comedy out that was oh, that was okay. on and you had the money and all the blah 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 <laughs> and all the successes and the riches, <laughs> the riches. that's done it's a lot of work uh -huh. do you want it again do you want something different do you want something what you think is better well i've now been on uh the neighborhood on cbs for the past three years and we're going to do the fourth year next year is that is that what you want to be doing because right, i think that's right right now yeah that's what, no, I shouldn't say well, that's what I want. That's what I am doing. And yes, I love it. Is this something you think you could continue to do? Forever, yeah. Yeah? What makes... Oh, I just got insecure. Why? Because 
I was complimenting New Girl and not... Oh, don't, please don't worry. I, that's I, okay, I, right? I, yeah, that's totally fine. I mean, no disrespect. I'm just not familiar. No, and no, I no, could no, have no. watched and I didn't. And I got the coffees. I, I was it's, planning on I, watching an episode no, it's, too. It's and I'm totally so sorry. Fine. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan. You're okay. But, like, uh, I just finished, uh, we just, yesterday, I just finished a table read for the show I'm working on. I know, I'm excited. Me too. Have you started yet? Yeah, we, uh, we, it's only eight episodes. It's I know. for Amazon. Um, we're finishing up episode six and seven this week. As Jason Kadams, right? Yeah. See, he lets you improv, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. If I were a guest on your podcast right now, I'd have so many things to say about this, but I can't. Well, I'm curious. I can't, I can't, I'm reading the comments now, of shut up and let him talk, of people to me. You know, like, I can't talk to you too right. much about my uh, well, show. I, it's exciting, that show. I, but uh, the small you, anecdote. You, 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 uh, you described it on Marin, and I went, oh, that's going to be good. It's, co- it's also a drama, which yeah. is, you know, cool. It feels like I've never been able to, I've never done that kind of stuff, uh, acting-wise. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, they let you improvise, and I get, uh, I get a, back to what I was, we were talking about, about improvising in front of the writer. Mm-hmm. Um, I was kind of oblivious to all of it. Is that thing. why you asked it? Because you were going through it on on set, and you're and you're probably. I, I don't. I wasn't thinking about it consciously, but probably. Okay. Because so I've always, where do you get insecure? For uh, pr- probably three months now, on um, I've start, something happened on this podcast where I just got embarrassed during really? during the interview, uh, and then. Through, I've just, I'm telling you for months now, I've just been almost living embarrassed. And I went most of my life oblivious to that there's even a possibility I was making a wrong choice. Why do you think it is? Uh, If I had to force, I have a hypothesis that I'm forcing. Okay. That is in part there. Um, I was was kind of blind to how people perceived me for a while. Uh Uh-huh. And... I kind of started to see that not that I'm wrong or just that there were literally multiple perspectives at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I'm on this podcast and then I went into, I'm trying to like figure it out and analyze it. And sometimes there's a good flow and then sometimes it's just, you're breaking it down too much. Just fucking get to the, get to the stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I did it enough to where I found the answer. I found out that I'll never know. I'll find out. I have no idea. I have no idea if you're really too close to the wall or if you're just, close to the wall and it is what it is mm-hmm. I, and I get I just I'm just terrified I'm here's where I'm forcing and it sounds so dramatic and woes me this isn't what it is but here's like the force thing this is why I don't have friends <laughs> do you know what I mean like I have so Max came over we got to read this script we were laughing we talked about children's books I want him to come over all the time incredible punchline and and uh i'm actually really you know i'm glad you're laughing i'm actually like emotional right now i don't know i i, I don't know I, and i'm saying i all i say sorry so much now i say sorry so much now did you never say it before you know if i was sorry you know if i if i if yeah. i bumped into you or you know i spilt something but now I'm just, oh, by the way, I'm sorry that we're talking about this too much. Is that, you know, like that shit. It's just like, whatever. So now I'm on set for the first time since my sorry phase. Uh huh. Number one on the call sheet, by the way. Which, really? I know. Very cool. It's Look an ensemble show. Somebody has to be one. I'm not I, I, more I, I, important. I, I, I'm I, I, not I, more important. But, you okay. know, it's, you know. You're number one. You got to set the tone. And I try and I apologize constantly for it. <laughs> but like, there's like this. Whatever, man. You know what? I'll, I'll just say it now. But let me. Are the sorries that you're are the sorries that you're saying? Are they? Are they? Um, this is where I pause for five minutes because yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah. I have the word. Let me let are you they, know. Are they sincere? Po- or are they? Are you actually apologizing? Or are you just like? Is it a way it's, to just? It's a way to acknowledge to save myself the same way I acknowledge the pimple. Like it, the least I could do was say, I know, I'm, I'm sorry, no, I shouldn't be here. So three months ago, is that right around when you started the job? No, it was, it's totally podcast, or I think it's podcast based. Let me, let me give you an example of something that happened on set. Okay. Yes. Bridge, we're playing bridge. It's a scene for bridge. Uh, me, Joe Montagna, and two beautiful older women. Great. None of us know how to play bridge. 
Okay, uh, so they course. bring in a bridge guy. Yeah. He's a pro bridge guy. We'll put it in the handle here. Yeah, yeah. He, I don't know how much he teaches people that don't know bridge, but he, um, he, he went A to C a lot. You know what I mean? Like, he assumed that we knew other stuff. Some of the terms he used. Yeah, so, that you're, you know, you turn your trick sideways. It's like, what, I don't know, we don't know what a trick even is. Yeah. Director's there. Other people are there. They don't know bridge. I, you know, I'm a quick learner with some things. And I, I, I know what he wants from us all, but he wasn't able to communicate it to everybody. Mm-hmm. So after less than a minute, but you know, almost a minute of, it's a long time when we're not doing anything. Uh-huh. I, I go, okay, listen, you don't even worry. Like they don't need to know the terms. I go, so just after she says the heart, just put your card down, turn it face sideways and turn it sideways. And then we'll just continue. I'm just literally, I just directed that thing mm-hmm. next to the director. As su- my instincts were just, collaborative i know i am able i felt able to do this the better and faster than anybody else now as soon as i did it i'm now hot i stepped on her toes i I shouldn't be doing this are they gonna think that oh i'm first i'm gonna be difficult to work with i'm i'm sorry by the way that i i I, you know and it's like and she's like it's no it's it's fine please stop saying sorry she told me to stop saying sorry it happened so much i go and now I'm, I'm going to be in the scene. I mean, thank God I'm playing somebody who's just constantly, you know, uh, so I could just use it. But that's kind of stuff. We'll be right back. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise with more than 50 years as a family owned business, we've got you covered. So hold on. When did you find out? Did you audition for the show? Yes. Two years ago. Or more than two years ago. Uh huh. And when did you start working on the show? Uh, March. Well, we filmed the pilot uh, October of 2019. Okay. And then... Oh, wow. Corona. I've heard of it. Um, and then so you... But you knew you were going to go back in March. Uh, I found out we got, it got picked up middle of last summer. Okay. Which was such a... I mean, I'm in this apartment. So you, you don't think that, that the anxiety over doing this show... And playing the character had anything to do with no, okay. no, because it started before we came, went went to work, and it's it's a, it's this podcast has broken me. And Re- do you read the comments or something? It's not it's not the it's not the that shit doesn't the compliments or the insult. I the, the, I get really is good it just feedback. talking with with another human being? Yeah, I I don't have conversations with. Were people. you insecure? Did you feel it during the Marin thing? No. I only feel I, I no. I'm, we're talking too much about me and this, and this is. I'm sorry to everybody who ca- I'm sorry. <laughs> that wasn't that was that, that was not a joke. That's the thing. I no obligations. I I really hope at some point, even if it's a while from now, you come back and I say I I, I just I don't even talk and you know I'll, I'll make you feel comfortable. Well, it feels like you're apologizing not to like get into this thing, but like I deal. You know, you're, it's like, feels like you're apologizing for yourself. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm overcorrecting. I think I'm in an overcorrection phase. Yeah, it's like you're not apologizing to somebody for anything. You're <laughs> apologizing to yourself because you're feeling insecure about who you are right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, I mean, the easy version is... This is so new to me, though. I, I, I still love myself, well, here, but I used to love myself. Well, I, well, look, I, but, you know, look, if you love yourself this much, know that when you hate yourself, you're going to hate yourself all the way down here. Yeah, it's not even hating myself. It's just I, I want to be better. Even uh-huh. this, I mean, for now for 25 minutes, it's like I, I can't edit this. <laughs> and somebody else has to do these camera switches. You know what I mean? Not not only am I doing this, I'm losing th- th- this stuff that I want to talk with you more. I just I just feel like, and I think that, and I and I think this a lot when I'm on set, and I've had moments like that where I've overstepped. I'm like, trust me, it's every job I've ever been on. I've had a moment where I've overstepped or I've done something and I've overspoke, and then I haven't slept that night because I've thought, well, surely I'll be fired, or oh God, now I gotta like make amends to this person and I gotta yeah. say sorry and do the whole thing. And one, uh, if an apology is necessary, great. 
but I don't, know, I don't know when it is. I mean, who knows? You can't, it, it never hurts to do it because it's more so for yourself than it is for the other person. Apologies are like turning signals. Yeah, like, like I have to give it to you because I'm holding on to it. Yeah, then it's an obligation to you to have to forgive me. That's why I used to not do it. It's like just... But it's also, I think a lot of it is... I, I just have learned to like, look, man, I got to let some of this shit go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got and I got to give myself a break. And it's taken a really long time. And then all of a sudden you get to a good place and then one hits you at it. Like, uh -huh. And you go, oh, and then you act like a real lunatic. And then you hate and you're like, oh, my God, because I haven't done it in a while. But like, I think there's just so much of. God, just chill out, man. Got to give yourself a break. You got to let go of the control of everything. And, and, and that includes, like, to some degree, yourself and your own behavior. Like, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be in these situations. So many of these situations are going to be new daily. And I'm going to make mistakes in those situations. And it's not an indictment on me or the other people. It's just like we're all, fi we're all figuring this out. Yeah. And there are some people that are just more adult than I am. Uh -huh. And I look at them and I go, man, I'm, they, they never do this. And they probably don't. <laughs> I don't know. But I know that I do and I can be aware of it, but I also need to forgive myself when it happens because it's going to affect the ability that I have to do the job that I'm doing in the moment. I, tr I trust enough my instincts of worst case scenario, I could be present with somebody and connect. It's just when it becomes too self-indulgent, which is what it had been. And I think we're on but the I way also out. Think were you at all? So you were not like that at all before this, these last three months. I am, as I am, I saw myself the way my mom still sees me up until January. Uh huh. I'm just, I'm the guy. I'm charismatic. I'm, 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 I'm kind. I'm funny. I'm interesting. I'm smart. You know, I'm creative and I make mistakes, but like, you know, I mean well and like, it is what it is. And then something happened and then I am sorry for who I am. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. It's, I'm almost preemptively sorry because, you know, who knows what will happen 10 minutes from now. So let me just say, I'm glad you came over. Thank you for everything that we did. I'm I, sorry. Well, look, I think it's good that you're aware of it and that you're trying, like, that you go, oh, this is uncomfortable. I wonder how long I'm going to wear this for. Could I move on? Yeah, sure. Can I move on? This is a thing that I've taught, I taught myself next time. I didn't do it fast enough, but let me move on. And I have questions for you that I'm, okay. I'm very interested in. Here we go good you have a even john wrote for you mm -hmm. you could you have created something so specific that people could try and do it i mean that not that you're easy to, i mean that in a, in a good way like you have a defined voice well there was some there i i would say there was some defined moves that were specific to new girl in, yes. in the script, sure. And that was a broad version of that. I don't mean like this is defining you. No, but I was like, I, I started to read it and I was like, oh, I see what we're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. here. But uh, that is, when you get tapped, when one gets tapped into a character, it's easy because like there's moves and it's like, it's just, uh, it's an energy thing that you get locked into an energy. Is that fair to? Yeah, sure. When you're doing other stuff and you want to be a different energy, is that a challenge? You try not to do other stuff. Does it matter? Does that question make sense? I think... Yeah, I'm really aware of it because I don't want to try too hard that all of a sudden now like I'm acting or I'm doing something weird, like whether you're going to watch it and go. Oh, so he's specifically not doing what uh -huh. I've seen people do that before. And it's really jarring. Um, so I don't want to I don't want to eliminate the possibility of doing things that might seem repetitive. But um but yeah, I mean, I try to really get into whatever the rhythm of the writing is and try to service it the best I can. And if, and if you know, some of the stuff from New Girl works its way in, all right. If it doesn't, ooh, this is new and interesting and nice. But I also have to realize that, like, you know, we did so much stuff on New Girl and did so many episodes and so many scenes and showed so many different things that, like, there's going to be crossover in every job I do. And so I can't, I just can't think about that. Like um, somebody, uh, somebody is inevitably going to watch whatever I do next and go, there's Schmidt. Is that and a yeah, bad I thing? Go, I don't care. I don't, I just don't care. I it, don't think it's a it, bad thing. It is, it is what it is. You probably get this question if you have done other podcasts and it's probably an annoying one for you, but we're going to do it again. 
Great. New Girl was a lot of improvisation. Uh, Lamorne, fan favorite of the yeah, show. Yeah, sure. We talk about it a bit. Um, it built that way, right? What do you mean? Like, as the show went on, there was more improv. Yeah, I mean, there was always a fair amount. There was always like a time. I think. I think it depends. I think it was more structured uh, in the beginning, and then it just got wide open uh, pretty quickly. When you were reading scenes beforehand, are you thinking of alts and stuff, or is it just you prepare the script and you go in and you play? Well, I was the least uh, improv- improvisationally trained actor on that what set. What do you mean trained? Like not going to Second City or something? Yeah, I didn't do any of that stuff. So yeah, But like Jake Johnson... I think he did UCB. He was in one of those, mm-hmm. but he had real, he had real uh, improv training. And Lamorne was Second City, yeah. and so those guys really know how to do it. And and what I mean by that is they can improv That's so out of at, like they can improv out of nothing, and they can do meaning like you know, here's a suggestion, and then they'll just go. Um, pineapple, and they'll talk about a pineapple. Yeah, and, and they'll create a whole scene. I, I'm, I'm like, hey man, I, do, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm so surprised to hear that. I, or, it doesn't translate that way. Or I can. <laughs> or the, the I worst will, thing to say. In I will scene. start off really slow. I really need somebody to lead it, so I had Jake and Lamorne to do it, and because that show, the way that it was structured specifically in the beginning. Where so many punchlines fell to me. So many fell to you? Yeah. What does that mean? Well, because the, the structure of the show in the beginning was we had Jake, Zoe, and they were the, they like grounded the show emotionally. And then there was me, and we had Damon Wayans Jr. in the pilot. Shout out to Damon Wayans Jr. So, yeah. Then, then Damon, we lose Damon after the pilot because he was attached to another show. Lamorne Happy comes endings. in. Yeah, Lamorne comes in in the second episode, but the producers were very open. They were like, "Look, we can't make the second episode about Lamorne moving in because the show is about Zoe moving in. So we're just kind of like we don't really know who Lamorne's character is. We don't know what we're gonna do with him. We're just gonna he's just here, okay, you guys and. It was really difficult for Lamorne because he was like, what am I doing here? Yeah. But they also just had to like hold on long enough so that they can get to a place where they felt it was organic to introduce his character. Right. So in the meantime, you had these two grounding characters and then you had this the sense that, well, we have to like make the show funny. We need like jokes. And so everything with Lamorne out. And with Lamorne out meaning because he's not established yet. Yeah. They were like, we don't know what we're going to do with them. And you have Jake and Zoe who oh, have so to you're play. the you're the like uh, what's it called in a movie when there's one comedian, whatever Com- comic relief. Yeah, ex- on a multi cam yeah, and totally. it's you because of that structure. I mean that character always sort of existed. It's like you know Jim Parsons on Big Bang Theory, it's Rain Wilson on The Office, it's you know that like that number three hitter where you know we're following the story, and then the guy comes in and does the inappropriate thing yeah. that interrupts like that doesn't allow it to get too emotional. Yeah. So in these crazy imp- like improv days I was always just trying to find jokes. You max. Yeah. So sometimes Be- sometimes sometimes we would like write them while we were doing it. The writers would come in and throw stuff at us. Um but I was but it felt necessary in the beginning to drive as hard as I can and this is not who I am. I I don't think as like instinctually Whereas to just drive towards the joke as hard as I can and to try and to like be the guy who's like trying to be the funny one. I could tell you from personal experience, it's exhausting and sometimes very reward. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm sorry to admit that. Uh, When did you realize uh, if you realized which I'm that you got it like you're in the pocket, man. That show is so good. Well, it was funny. I uh, how are you on time? I'm great. Yeah. Um, you'll enjoy this. So I went, so the show, I I mean, I really had not worked that much up until new girl. 
And then all of a sudden, I get this job. And I had been doing it long enough and had been failing at it long enough, but had been in the business long enough, specifically television, to know you have Zoe coming in and doing this show who just had a, who, who was like one of the bigger movie names to come and do a network television show. Right. Liz Merriweather had a, was like a really, really, really exciting writer to a lot of people. And Jay Kasdan was producing it. It was with Churn and Entertainment, who were big producers that were tied to Fox. And it was 20th for Fox. I go every, just everything about this. You say was 20th, meaning same network, same studio, studio yeah. which and is then, and a And nice just it was set up in a way where I was like, we would have to really mess this up mm -hmm. for it not to have a run. So like when we got a back nine, as surprised as I was, it was like, okay, yeah. Back nine is you were, you were 13 episodes yeah. and they ordered nine more. Yeah. And got it, got every, every time we got picked up for, you know, when the pilot got picked up or we got more an, or more of an episode order, it was like, this, this all makes sense. I mean, uh -huh. I was grateful and so happy and excited about it, but it fit in line to what I originally thought. Um, so while all that was happening and the show was sort of like, popping and specifically because of what we talked about being in that number three position where you're getting all those jokes you know you're the funny guy on the show mm -hmm. and so you are being noticed and i was because i didn't come from ucb or second city and because i hadn't worked beforehand that much or especially comedically i i was i was sort of stunned that that i was funny and then i could be this funny Really? How old are you at that point? 31. And so I was sort of shocked by it because I didn't approach it from like a, from a from a comedic standpoint. I approached it as an actor. I was like, I just came in. I'm trying to play the you role. You said that you've been in it long enough, but you didn't blah, 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 blah. Uh, was it not comedy stuff you were doing? I had tested for a bunch of comedies and would get so close and never get it. But you're not a funny guy in your head. I don't, I never approach it from like a, I never am approaching it from like, okay, well, how can we punch these jokes or how can I go after the joke? It's what's the scene? Right. Which and how so, it should be, right? I mean, I, that comes, I, that comes I first. I think, but you know, on a multicam, uh, well, the like working different. with, working with Cedric, you know, he does both and does it really well. He understands the scene, but also knows where the joke is, knows how to hit yeah. the joke, knows how to structure the joke. And understands that as a stand-up comedian, he is somebody who is right Instinct right instinctively, yeah. but instinctively, like he knows where the joke is, knows where it's supposed, or knows where it's supposed to be, and knows how to get yeah. there. And so he will often tell me, like, "You got to hit this joke like this." And he's like, always what do you mean, like right. a line read. Could you give an example? There's like line reads, or there's little physical movements that he might say. Could you think of something specific? I can't, um, but he has on numerous occasions just sort of like been like you should do it like this and, and when uh, he says that you just go of course like this uh, yeah um that's a nice thing to have yeah it's great he's the he's the greatest um but so anyway so th th this is this is why i can't have a podcast because i'll tell stories for right now. i'm i'm the the end of this is all of a sudden i start getting all this recognition i have all these people telling me like you're so funny <laughs> people on the show outside the, outside the, the, of the world show. yes the Fans. world yeah because be and because i hadn't been on anything i was so new to everybody right and right. I, who's and, this guy yeah and it's not even it's like people within other actors who i'm running into and actors who i love and respect and yeah and you know we we met each other on that futile stupid gesture and stupid gesture movie with david wayne yeah Right after New Girl season one, I met all those guys because they had me. That was me. way after season one. No, but after season one, they David had me That's come and be a part of. Um, they came together, which is oh, dude, I, f yeah, yeah, you're so good in that. And so, but I remember going to I do that. I want to show a scene of it. I remember going to do that movie, and it's like David's directing. Show Walter, who I had uh -huh. I developed a relationship with, who I love, was writing it. Um, but you had like Paul Rudd, Amy Poehler, and then the list of every funny human being on earth uh -huh. was in that movie. And I remember showing up and being like this. Well, it doesn't get any better than this. Uh huh. I'm and so with, I felt unfutile, by the way. Yeah, I was like, this is, these are my heroes. Uh huh. 
<laughs> I remember having a discussion with somebody. They were like, isn't there anybody you want to work with? And I was like, I kind of already did it. I want to uh, tell you this real quick. Uh, when I first moved here, I had a bulletin board. I still have it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's two directors I want to work with. There's two names. It's uh, David Wayne uh-huh. and Edgar Wright. And oh, cool. I, that was my first movie was with David Wayne. I mean, he's been on my bulletin board for years. I mean, it was... It's Yeah. Anyway, I, I connected you on that. So during that time, I was like, well, you know, I wonder, like, how <laughs> funny am I? And and I was like, I guess we should j- just try to, like, let's push this to see where this goes and what the limit is. Let's meaning you and well, you. I talk to myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a collective we in my uh, head, same. which is, you know. Uh, people are always like, why did, you say, why did you say we? And I'm like, well, it's a long story. <laughs> yeah, and I'll <laughs> tell myself about it after we're done. There is never an I. It's always a we. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. We'll have a discussion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, uh, so I remember going to do Letterman. There's never an I, only a we, by the way. is uh, If you did stand-up, I would say, that's, write that down. <laughs> that's good. So I go to do Letterman. And I go, all right. Let's see what we got. <laughs> and he had like the animal guy on beforehand. Uh-huh. And, I had, and I had done the pre-interview and I told the story about birds. And I was like, you know, I'm afraid of birds. There was one time I got attacked by an ostrich. And I thought, it's a eh, medium bit. And so I go, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll just get in there and we'll like go after it. And so I walk out, a little nervous, sit down. And Dave <laughs> just goes, so I hear you don't like birds. And then just leaned back and just across his arms. And I went, oh, no. <laughs> Wait, I'm not understanding. Oh, no, because now you have to tell the story? Well, I was like, oh, I'm just now in story mode. And I now have to, I'm like on my own here. Right. And I'm, and I'm fighting from a deficit. And as I was dying in that moment, dying because I have you're in control. I'm juggling. I'm tr- uh-huh. looking for. Pu- I'm looking for punchlines. I'm not playing off of anybody. Uh-huh. He's asleep, yeah, 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 yeah. and I'm like, oh my god! Wow. I'm starting to sweat. Uh-huh. My hand starts to go numb, and I'm go- <laughs> and I go. Before this, I thought, you know, maybe I'm Steve Martin. Oh, right, right, and right. during this, I'm going. I don't ever want to be funny again. Uh-huh. I hate this. I don't want anything to do with this. <laughs> and I like got a few laughs somewhere in there. But at the end, I was like, well, great. That was the leveler. Thanks so much, uh-huh. guys. It was so much fun being here. I appreciate everything. Get me the fuck out of New York. Did that change your confidence after a, a day later? Or is it fine? No, it was just it was a moment where it just kept the train kept going up the hill. It's like crypto. Y- yeah. Until- I mean, I don't really know what crypto is, but like... <laughs> It's a, it's a children's book. Oh, okay. Uh, it just go, keeps going I up until... Were, I thought you were talking about cryptocurrency. I am, I am. I am. Oh, we'll okay. let a, the children's book right. in. Uh, you're saying it just you're constantly going up until there's a... Until I, just, I was getting all of this praise and the world was saying... The message I was receiving from the world was, you're funny, you're funny, you're funny, you're funny, you're funny. And I was like, okay, well, let's look like genuinely... And I think in a healthy way, let's push this yeah, as yeah. far as we can and let's... Let's see where we are. Let's see what the reality is. Let's see what this is. And it was the it was it was finally where the train just smashed into a wall and I went, "Oh, okay, cool. Okay, cool." And it didn't really, it didn't affect me other than, you know, for 5 minutes afterwards. Yeah. But I I was like, "Okay, great. Now I know." There's something very important as uh as uh it's such a corny term, but really artists that you ha- that like you are really good at one thing, two things, three things, but like whatever it is, it, it, it's a career, but there's certain, a very broad example is there are some people that are so funny that are so bad on Instagram. Well, totally. But I, I also say this, it's like, you can, you can dunk, right? Thank you. Yes. I gave that to you. Um, yes. I knew that, but you would never go to a professional basketball player and say, I'm an athlete. I get your you, point. You might actually do point. that, but you, you, a, a, someone, another person might, wouldn't, wouldn't do it. You might do it. I, yeah. Okay. I, I understand. <laughs> but you don't that, say. That's not a, f- that's not close enough to me though. Because 
I'm I'm an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I am. I am. I am. Okay, but for argument's sake, let's just for this conversation. You're not a good podcast host. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I'm saying that like I wouldn't go to a Mark Marin and say I'm good at this too. But no, but you would say I'm a podcast host. Yes. You've done 100 episodes and you're I was you're, being self-deprecating. I'm a better athlete than I am at this. Okay. Um So, but so you don't say to an athlete an a, a, a professional athlete that you're an athlete. Maybe you do, but most people do not. Just like I would never go, like once you're in it for a while, like I wouldn't go to you, quite frankly, or to Cedric or to any stand up and be like, I write jokes. I understand. Even though I've improv a million jokes on TV, right. but that's not what I do. Right. And, and I think just like understanding what people do and. And what, I th- what do you do? Like, How do you describe but, what you do? But I, well, I think I'm, I think I'm an actor. Um, and, and it's, I think it's as simple as that. Um, but where uh, I had a good thought and then you, you wouldn't tell them. Yeah, I, this is, this is the problem and I'm sorry. So you, uh, you wouldn't go to an athlete and say you're an athlete. Um, cause what is it that, you know, people are, are funny, but they're not good on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, a, I could take it from here. I was in a pocket. I had a good, I had something good to say. You know, and eventually, you know, if we we would we would be better together, and I take full responsibility. I interrupted. It's fine. It's you didn't you didn't interrupt. You didn't interrupt. I honestly don't even know really where I was going with it. Okay. I got thrown a little bit by the athlete thing because I realized you go. I don't get it. <laughs> well, you know, I, mean, I got it. I just don't agree. I just. Uh, I I would sooner. Oh, I know. I was gonna say. No, hold on. No, it was. <laughs> it was. It's exa- It was the relationship and the tone. That you had with Mark on his show, which I was complimenting you on before, which is, you know what he does, uh-huh. and you know what he's earned, and you know how long he's been doing this, and who he came up with, and you understand his history. When you're sitting, you could hear that in the tone of your comedy and your voice with him. And that, I think, was the most impressive and what I really loved about what you did on there. Does because that make I sense? recognized who he is. Don't, doesn't everybody who go on his podcast recognize the, what it, I mean, what it is they're doing? I'm well, sorry. I just don't understand it. I want to hear more. Yeah. I just think it's, it's having an understanding of, of, of who the people are that you're with and that you're working with. And I think that helps right. inform what you guys end up doing together. Because if you would come in there like, oh, well, this is all about me and I'm going to and, and I'm going to, you know, he's going to ask me some questions and I'm going to tell Mark about my career. It's like, no, that's not how it went. It was you could tell that you were sort of honored to be there in a way and that you respected him in a great way and that you guys were having a genuine back and forth from one comic who has probably been around and done had more of more life experience than you and you who you know in some ways are probably a lot like a younger version of him mm-hmm. and you felt that in that and it was really nice what about this conversation how there was that you know section where i'm like talking about apologizing and i'm i'm making it about me so much while my guest is there but i asked you i asked you to open it up and that's that's part of what podcasting is yeah it's not, I'm not interviewing you necessarily, right? That you're coming over and we're having a conversation. It's, yeah, totally. I think I, it's, it's, a bummer, it's a bummer when, when you turn one on, I think, and, and it turns into an interview. There are some people, and you could be one of these people, and it didn't organically, but there's some people who it doesn't feel forced to interview them because I have so many questions. I have so many questions for you. I really do, and we didn't get to most of them. Um, there are some people, it's, you have conversations, some people, when I had David Wayne on, it was... I don't know if anybody's interested. Here's the things I'd ask you with the cameras off. You know, like this joke. Yeah, how yeah, you do this yeah. And what, blah, 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 blah. Uh, do we have a couple minutes to figure out a, a dismount or should we just end it now? No, let's figure out a, a dismount. Oh, I have something for you. I'm going to like kids books. Oh, right on, man. I know, how to, I know how to button it. Let's see if this works. Do you have ICM's number? I'll find it. <laughs> I can't. I have no. I have no. You're internet. really gonna call him? Yeah, I was, I'm gonna call him. Okay. Tell me what the number is. I see. You know, John Dewalt wrote this incredible script. I missed this part at the bottom. I see him. 
I gotta practice this. Give ICM a call. I gotta work with DeWalt. Set it up and then hang up immediately. Okay. Three one zero. Oh wait, hold on. <laughs> okay, three one zero. Five five zero. Five five zero. <laughs> Yeah, I got to work with DeWalt. Set it up. No, <laughs> you got to say this is Max Greenfield. Doesn't it say that? No. Oh, but you got to let him know. You got to call him back. You got to let him know it's you. You got to. Otherwise, what's the fucking point? They're going to be like some weirdo just called. And you know what? Improvise. Ask if you could speak to one of the bigger agents. Hey, I'm so sorry. I just called before. Do you do you know who represents John DeWalt? This is Max Greenfield. I wouldn't know who represents anyone. I only have an agent's list. I don't have a I have to talk to a big list. agent. Oh, um, well, he's a, he's a writing client over there. Uh, John DeWalt. Right. He's not on your yeah, radar? He would, need to know, he would need to know his agent. Katie. So I can transfer you over to it, his page. Say, hold on. It's Katie um, something. Uh, I believe it's Katie. Um, say, give you 30 seconds. G give me 30 seconds, I'm just, um... Katie Katie yeah, me, Katie I mean, John, I'm sorry, but it's... How do you get a job in this? I mean, you're literally... <laughs> I literally was calling. <laughs> I mean, they make it so hard. I mean... <laughs> This is a massive opportunity that he's missing. Huh? I mean, this is this is crazy. If, if this was real life, honestly, I'd be like, that's ah, not worth of it. Of course. Right now, I'd be like, this is not worth it. I mean, even now, you have to get going, and I'm getting a little, but I want this bit to continue. Give it another 20 seconds. All right, I'm going to give it, it's been a minute 21 right now. Why don't you hang up, call back, ask for Katie. Okay. That's crazy. Is that that John isn't on the radar or is also that you're not on the radar enough or do they not believe it's you? Oh, well, now, now, now they're calling the police on me. <laughs> All right, are we done? We'll try one more time. Okay. Max Greenfield from New Girl or from the neighbors, you know, whatever you want to say. Yes, hi. Can you connect me to Katie's office? Katie. Yes, Katie. This is Max Greenfield from New Girl. That is his real agent, so don't hang up on her. But, you know, we could... Or hang up on her. I don't know. I don't know. I'm nervous now. I mean, it's got to be so hard to get jobs, even when you're offered. Well, let's see if we connect with Katie. We... Uh, leave a message that you want to, we're pitching an animated show, so you'll do a voice maybe. No. Please. Hey, Katie, uh, this is Max Greenfield from the television show New Girl. Uh, gotta work with Walt. Set it up. Scoot doo. Perfect. Blabbity blue. Scoop D. Oh, 